Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Captain Rishita and I welcome you back to License to Fly. And if you dream of becoming a pilot, you're in the right place. Today, we are at one of the country's newest airports, Manohar International Airport, Goa. Why are we here? We are here to find out about ATC or air traffic control. ATC is literally the guiding voice for pilots, orchestrating our movement in the sky. Without them, flying the aircraft through congested or controlled airspace is impossible. They help prevent collisions, expedite traffic flow, give flight advice and coordinate search and rescue efforts as needed. Interesting, right? So without further delay, let's find out more about the role of ATC in flying the aircraft safely through the skies. Imagine managing takeoffs and landings for hundreds of flights each day with no room for error whatsoever. Sounds tiring, right? So to help us understand how ATC manages stress and their day-to-day -day life, we have with us the man conducting this phenomenal orchestra, Mr. Sajid, ATC in charge, Mopa. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sajid. Thank you and likewise, welcome to Mopa. Thank you. I know how important each second is for you. So I'll keep this interview short and crisp. I've already explained to our audience what ATC is, but I would like to know it from you. How would you describe ATC to a layman and what are the highlights of being an ATC controller? Well, Captain Nishita, to answer the first part of your question, how many aircrafts do you think fly in and out of this country, let alone the world? Uh, thousands. Yes, it means that there is bound to be traffic or congestion of aircraft in our skies, right? and collision risk therefore as well, where comes the need for ATC. So essentially one of ATC's primary roles is ensuring flawless air traffic, that is the flights are on track, monitored at all times and safe. That's right, we guide pilots to every stage of the journey from takeoff to landing, like you said, orchestrators of the skies. Well that you are. As pilots we feel safe and confident knowing that you're there. Let's talk a bit more about day-to-day -day life of an ATC. Let's start with, how does your day begin once you report? Most of us report for predetermined positions. We observe the traffic situation for some time, and then we take over fresh or from the previous controller in live conditions. Okay, and what instruments do you use for various functions? Well, mostly VHF to communicate, and nowadays automation and radar in a very big way. So moving on to the next question. So with such high stakes, how do you manage real-time decision-making? Can you quote a challenging situation? It's a skill that comes with years of practice. Moreover, simple and precise rules and our ingenuity make it possible. For instance, in recent times, we had uh, very bad monsoons around here. A lot of low clouds and on one day, we had almost four go-arounds one behind the other. So we did give them real and precise information about the weather. And then we managed to bring back all of them in a matter of around 20 to 25 minutes. All this uh, with the risk of collision also happening because all aircrafts will be trying to avoid weather and moving the same place. Sounds very intense. So what about traffic? How do you handle heavy traffic congestion? Each sector has its own optimum and peak capacity determined. Each controller also is trained and retrained constantly to handle this peak traffic. Moreover, in our trainings and uh, simulations, each controller is taken up from low traffic to handle this peak traffic in a comfortable and cool manner. So you can find most of the controllers are handling peak traffic with a very cool mind and with no great modulation in the voices. That's how we are trained and we are handling the peak traffic without any problems. Right. For those aspiring to be air traffic controllers, how do they get started? What exams do they need to take? Well, right now in India, Airports Authority of India is the only organization which is authorized to provide air traffic control service. And they have their own tests for that. Well, that's great information for our aspirants. Lastly, what would you like to tell those who want to join your elite ATC team? What I can tell you is this job demands unwavering focus, split second decision making, and the ability to adapt to ever-changing situations. The stress is immense, the workload is heavy, and the environment is very dynamic. 
So if you are considering joining us, be prepared to live a highly disciplined and committed life. But rest assured, for the right candidate, the sky is the limit. No wonder it is one of the most stressful jobs in the world. Thank you for keeping us guys safe. And once again, thank you so much for your time and patience, Mr. Sajid. It was a pleasure meeting you, Captain Ishita. Thank you. Thank you. I'm at the heart of where all the magic happens. The second a pilot hops on the hot seat, the communication with ATC begins. These are not generic random conversations or unstructured sentences, but precise, situation-specific, globally standardized phrases. This is known as radio telephony or RT for short. Let's break down the phraseology we use as pilots and ATC controllers, starting with pushback clearance. Pushback and engine startup mark the beginning of the journey to the runway. As pilots, we now communicate with ground control for clearance to pushback and startup. Here is how the communication goes. Give it a listen. Tower I fly 6302, parking stand 4. Request pushback and start for Delhi. Level requested 350 with QNH 1010. Total POB 180 through security. I fly 6302, Tower Roger, QNH correct. Pushback and startup approved facing east. Pushback and startup approved facing east. I fly 6302. I fly represents the call sign for Indigo, while the number is the actual flight number. Now, once we get the clearance, we move to the next phase, which is taxiing and takeoff. With engines spurring, we request for clearance on taxiing the aircraft. What is taxi? Broadly, it means taking the aircraft to the runway guided by the ATC ground control team through specific taxiways. Tower IFLY 6302, request taxi. IFLY 6302, tower taxi to holding point runway 2A via Delta Echo Alpha Alpha 6. Taxi via Delta Echo Alpha Alpha 6, holding point runway 2A, IFLY 6302. Here's an audio of the pre-departure clearance. IFLY 6302, ready to copy clearance. IFLY 6302, tower clearance. IFLY 6302, clear to Delhi via flight plan route. After departure, climb on runway heading to 5,000 feet. Further with approach radar for departure scope 0234. I fly 6302, clear to Delhi, flight plan route, runway heading 5,000. Further with approach radar, scope 0234. I fly 6302, tower clearance correct. Did you notice the scope code at the end? It's super important. The scope code is assigned to us by ATC. It enables ATC to identify and track our aircraft or any other aircraft on their radar. This way, we are constantly being monitored and under the supervision of the ATC. Once ready, we request the tower controller for takeoff clearance. I fly 6302 tower, line up runway 28. Line up runway 28, I fly 6302. I fly 6302 tower, runway 28, cleared for takeoff, winds 260 degrees, 7 knots. Runway 28, clear for takeoff, I fly 6302. Once airborne, we are handed over to the next controller who guides us on our cleared route towards our destination. As we near the destination, air traffic control becomes even more critical. They get busy choreographing the approach, sequence landings and navigating busy airspace for our safe landing. Let's hear how that communication unfolds. I fly 6302 radar, descend and maintain 4,600 feet, report established on ILS. Descend and maintain 4,600 Call established on ILS, I fly 6302. Now comes the final part, landing. At this last and final stage, ATC ensures safe landings with minimal delays and efficient runway use. The commands for the landing go like this. I fly 6302 tower, runway 28, clear to land, winds 270 degree, 8 knot. Runway 28, clear to land, I fly 6302. Once we get the clearance, we can now go ahead with our landing on the cleared runway. And that's it, you have landed safely. I hope you now have an idea as to how pilots communicate with ATC. Time to discuss about another aspect, Indigo's air traffic management vertical. And to discuss about the same, we have with us Director Air Traffic Management Flight Operations, Mr. Surinder Nerli. Hello, Captain Ishita. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Nerli. From you, I would like to know more about Indigo's air traffic management vertical. Sure, Captain Nasheta. Our job is to bridge the gap between pilots and air traffic controllers. We work very closely with airport authorities of India, Indian Air Force, Indian Navy, and other aerodrome operators to streamline the processes of ATS and aerodrome. 
that's great one piece of advice for our aspiring pilots before i let you go my advice to the pilots is to maintain crisp and clear communication with air traffic control to ensure flight safety thank you mr nerly perfect way to conclude the episode i hope you've gained a deeper appreciation for the intricate ballet the air traffic controllers perform next time you're on a flight make sure to remember there's an entire team of professionals working tirelessly to ensure you're safe and comfortable in the next episode of license to fly we'll cover another topic another place with another industry expert watch out for the next episode until then take care and goodbye